So hello, my name is Melissa D'Amico and I'm in my final year of my undergraduate environmental studies degree in the Honors Tutorial College at Ohio University. Um, and after my freshman year in this program, I became a research apprentice with Dr. Jeff DeBelko and spent the summer embedded in the office of Age Friendly Columbus and Franklin County, a research planning and advocacy organization seeking to make communities more livable for people of all ages. So age-friendly communities is a strategy developed by the World Health Organization in response to older adults comprising a growing proportion of the population. This strategy uses eight domains, which are shown on the screen, to assess communities and develop environments that foster healthy and active aging that is safe, free from poverty, and allows older adults to age with autonomy, health, and dignity. In the United States, AARP facilitates the age-friendly strategies um, with the goal of creating communities that are more livable for people of all ages. While in age-friendly Columbus, I considered that um, someone's risk during an emergency event is determined by two factors. The first is their individual vulnerability. Um, Factors that increase an individual's risk to natural hazards could be social, like being socially isolated, for instance, which um, unfortunately many older adults experience, um, particularly in rural areas. Or an individual could be more vulnerable because of physical limitations, um, like having limited physical mobility, having to rely on um, health devices or mobility devices, or even having just a, a chronic condition that requires daily medication, all of those could increase your vulnerability during a natural hazard. Um, while reviewing literature, I found that climate assessments regularly identified older adults as a demographic um, vulnerable to the impacts of climate change because they tend to have these characteristics, but rarely had tailored mitigation plans to adapt at, for adaptation strategies um, to lower older adults' unique risk. Um, this is particularly problematic considering the trend toward aging populations that many developed nations, um, including the United States, are experiencing. While in Columbus, I found that older adults often suffered during extreme events because they were receiving the warnings um, for impending natural hazards like a heat wave, um, but they weren't sure what to do in response um, to those warnings to mitigate their vulnerability. So on the screen, I've listed the characteristics I found that make individuals um, more vulnerable during natural hazards. And then for all of these characteristics, they're um, likely to become more prevalent as, you, as we age. The second factor that influences an individual's risk is the natural hazard itself. So that's the type of natural hazard, the strength of it, and the location or proximity to the communities or infrastructure. We know that as the climate continues to change, natural hazards will increase in intensity and frequency. Um, so in Ohio, what that will look like is more intense heat waves, um, more frequent flooding, and more severe storms. All of these hazards can result in power outages from overuse or damage to power infrastructure. And while Ohio isn't necessarily experiencing like the wildfires we're seeing out west or hurricanes um, like other parts in the, of the US, the heat and flooding and the power outages are particularly problematic for older adults because of the unique um, characteristics and the unique um, vulnerability that they have, um, which I mentioned in the previous slide. So to decrease um, this vulnerability in Columbus, I collected resources um, from just uh, reliable aging resources and climate ones that would provide information to older adults about how to prepare for um, what to do during and what to do after all of the disasters I mentioned um, on the previous slide. Following my time in Columbus, I continued to research these topics in Athens, Ohio as a Voinovich undergraduate research scholar. Um, I began reviewing the sustainability plans from Athens city and county organizations and noted overlaps in domains critical to age-friendly efforts. So while reviewing each of the eight reports, I noted um, if they mentioned adaptations for vulnerable populations, if the plan particularly named older adults as a vulnerable population, and any adaptation the report suggested or plans the group um, made that would have an impact on older adults in the community. 
So this is an example from the Village of Amesville Sustainability Roadmap where they identified older adults as vulnerable because of um, individual mobility limitations. Um, one of the characteristics I talked about earlier was um, the limited mobility that older adults sometimes have. So to make their community more sustainable, Amesville identified that they would need to provide greater transportation services um, for its older adult constituents. Next, I have an example from the Athens County Sustainability Roadmap, which specifically identified older adults as vulnerable. Um, and this was kind of unique because of the reports I reviewed, this was one of only three that named older adults as a vulnerable population. Um, and you can see they did so with the asterisks um, and, and included older or elderly as a vulnerable population. The reports that, um, the other reports that mentioned older adults in particular were hazard mitigation related rather than focused on sustainability efforts. Um, finally, I have an example um, from the Athens Sustainability Action Plan, which shows plans for implementing a carbon tax, a measure that would certainly impact older adults. Um, and after reviewing all of these plans, I was able to present my findings to the age-friendly Athens County Sustainability Domain the first age-friendly community to have added a ninth domain for sustainability and climate resilience. Um, I was able to make suggestions for including older adults in these types of conversations and activities um, in Athens, Ohio. Um, as I'm in my final year of my undergraduate degree in the Honors Tutorial College, I'm working on my thesis um, on these same topics. For this project, I will be conducting interviews with leadership among the 14 age-friendly communities in Ohio to assess opportunities for pursuing climate smart and age-friendly community interventions. In addition to being the topic of my undergraduate thesis, lessons from these qualitative interviews will inform pilot programs to test goals developed in partnership with Age-Friendly Innovation Center, the new name for Age-Friendly Columbus and Franklin County since moving their operations to the Rev1 ventures in Columbus, which is an innovation center. Um, additionally, age friendly being an international strategy offers opportunities to scale up these local efforts um, in Athens and Columbus and compare um, what's going on here to what's going on in international communities. So in addition to my undergraduate thesis um, and writing that, I am also learning Japanese as Japan has a super aged society and the islands frequently experience natural disasters. Despite these characteristics though, Japan is well known for its care of older adults and has developed some of the most innovative emergency preparedness measures. So a comparative study um, with Japan would is, is kind of the next step for my research. Um, and that's all I have um, today. So thank you for your attention.